So this is this is a, a, a one that I you don't want to get to. And I wanted to explain this so everybody can, one, understand where I'm coming from with a lot of different stuff. I think a lot of times we, you know, it's misconstrued about how I feel about certain things. Um, and a lot of people don't really be paying attention to what I'm saying. They just look at the theatrics. They look at the things around it. But when you actually break down what I'm saying, I'm saying some, some really consistent things. And my thing about Kevin Stefanski is, you know, to me, we've been um, brainwashed a little bit into thinking that we can't have negative things to say about a person or negative things that a person can do. I wouldn't even say negative. I would say constructive criticism, feedback. You know, in, in, any time that you were in a profession, and when I worked in corporate America, everybody was huge on feedback. It wasn't criticism. It wasn't, you did this, you're a bad person. You did this, you suck. It's all about feedback. And one of the things with Kevin Stefanski is sometimes we, we, we've we gotten to the point where it's either you on the left or the far right. Either you think Kevin Stefanski should get a, a, an extension today and he's the best coach that you've seen since uh, uh, um, Bill Belichick. But then there's also another group of individuals that feel like Kevin Stefanski is one of the worst coaches ever. They hate his playbook. They hate his clock management. They don't like his communication style. And they would rather get him out, and they think the Browns are never going to win a thing with Kevin Stefanski at the helm. Now, for me, my question is, how do you marry the two, right? How, how do you have a, 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 an intelligent conversation with the fans and the community, in the media, and out in the public sphere, when you got one group of people that's just like, they ain't, they not going to give them credit for nothing. And there's another group of people that are basically uh, carrying water and being apologists. And I was thinking about it because even after we won and we were eight and five and Flacco threw for 311, the first thing people started talking about is how much of that is Flacco? How much is that? Uh, with, 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 with Stefanski, right? How much is, who gets the credit? And I wanted to just come on here and break this down and say, people, it's not that simple. It's not that difficult. I mean, it's simple, actually. Kevin Stefanski should get credit for keeping his team together. Kevin Stefanski should get credit for always having to reinvent himself. And then be able to do that on the run, on the fly. He should get credit for that. He should get credit for the fact that if he's won games with four other quarterbacks, with all different play styles, with all different types of skill sets, he should get credit that your best offensive player, Nick Chubb, has been gone to, you know, since week two, and you still found a way with your other running backs to, to run the football. You, you found a way to, to consistently at least try to stay a little balanced in terms of your run-pass mix when you have two tackles that are backups. You should get credit for all of that. However, I can walk and chew gum at the same time. I can say that Kevin Stefanski has done a good job in those things, but I could also throw out there and say, look, Sometimes he opens himself up to criticism when he should be running the ball or more diligent and sticking to the run without throwing the ball. I know his identity. I know his heart of hearts is, is I want to pass the ball. But sometimes when you up two scores and you got two, two tackles that are backups and your quarterback is 39, some would argue that you come out and run a little clock off, Kev. And if you don't, and they have turnovers, or if a good quarterback gets sacked because he's dropping back like yesterday, you're going to open yourself up for a little criticism. But even with that criticism, it, no one's saying fire him today. You can have constructive feedback for somebody without saying you're done, you're terrible, you're the worst coach we've ever, we've ever seen. Right now, we we living under the all or nothing mindset in our country. Either you all in or you all out. There's no middle ground. 
And for Kevin Stefanski, there has to be some nuance. There's, there's, there has to be, you know, people have to have the ability to have a nuanced conversation about a head coach. And the reason I believe that he gets so much criticism is this. Anytime you are a coach, but you wear multiple hats, say you're the GM and the coach, say you're the head coach and the um, coordinator. If you're doing both of those things, you're going to, you're going to open yourself up to more criticism. Because if Alex Van Pelt was over the offense and they didn't run the ball during times where fans thought it would be more opportunity to run the ball and and to keep things, you know, balanced, they would go after Van Pelt. They wouldn't say anything about Kevin Stefanski. He'd be the fall guy. But you, you see, when you are doing more than one things, you have more multiple chances or opportunities for people to say, I don't like your time management. I don't like your, your play calling. I don't like your, your, your schemes. I really don't like uh, um, the different things that you're doing in terms of uh, your challenges, challenge, fly- all of those things you're opening yourself up to. But for me, I think Kevin Stefanski can be two things at once. I believe that he could be a coach that should be commended for doing what he's doing, and and not many people in the league can even fathom doing that, what he's done with the injuries. But I also do believe that you could talk about and have a conversation about his play calling and say sometimes he does get a little pass happy. That doesn't mean he gets too pass happy and we got to fire him tomorrow. That's not what we're talking about. We got to get a little bit nuanced when it comes to those situations. And I think it, the more that the further we go, I think the more and more it should set in that, yes, you can criticize somebody and still think that they're doing a good job. 